Hello, and welcome back to Battle Plan, a podcast focused on spiritual warfare. I'm Steve Hemphill, and Battle Plan is an ongoing discussion of how we put our faith into action. Our website is active-faith.org. My email is stevehemphill1 at me.com. In our last episode, we asked the question, can scripture stakes solve church unrest? Today, we're going to discuss the question, can scripture stakes remove church splitters? Let me start with Romans 16, verse 17, NLT. And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you've been taught. Stay away from them. Let me just tell you a couple of real-life examples of how I've seen uh, interesting things happen once we stake a church. Now, some churches have experienced someone leaving right after they've staked their facilities. At first, I thought, well, that's just weird. Why would that happen? But then we had some churches who had someone leave as soon as they staked the facility, and it turns out they found out there were undertones of gossip and slander and and uh, bad mouth and the leadership and the programs and the direction of the church. So they were actually there uh, harming more than they were helping. Even if they were a giver, they were, in, they were discouraging others in, in very substantial ways. Uh, Michael Lehan is a friend of mine who was a Satanist for 22 years before he became a Christian. And his best-selling book, by Thomas Nelson Publishing is called Ascent from Darkness, and it's a story of his life as a Satanist before he became a baptized believer in Jesus. He spent 22 years in that world of the occult, cutting his arm, worshiping Satan each night, following their orders, doing all kinds of strange things that that we would find strange as Christians anyway, but he friended me on Facebook one day after I started doing spiritual warfare teaching, and he said, I need to talk to you because I've worked against you. I've been, I've been working for the enemy before I became a Christian, and I know why your stuff works. One of the things he told me was his main assignment as a Satanist was to go to Christian churches pretending to be a Christian just so he could cause church splits. He was very good at it. He also uh, worked hard to seduce young women. He was doing everything he can to, uh, to, could to undermine the, the work of the church, and he, was, he did that for 22 years. Strange story, um, and when you think about it, here's a, an enemy in the camp, so to speak, a, a wolf among sheep, and here he is. He, uh, he's there to cause problems. What's the one thing he couldn't stand to do? He couldn't stand to be in the auditorium when they had praise and worship time. Remember when Saul would uh, have a demon come on him after the Holy Spirit left Saul when he disobeyed God? And then what did they do to help Saul feel better? They had David come play praise music. Demons can't stand to be where God's being praised. Leham was there on assignment, and he tells stories of this in his book, Ascent from Darkness, by Thomas Nelson Publishing. But he couldn't stand to be. He'd stay in the the, uh, lobby and drink coffee till that was over. And then the last thing I want to mention, a real life story, is that two different churches that I know of staked the church with scripture stakes, but the staff didn't know it. Members staked it or leaders there staked it, but the staff wasn't informed. It was just they were excited about doing it and just did it. And right after they staked the church, the whole staff resigned. That's happened twice. Many people are in ministry for the wrong reasons. They're there to promote their own agenda rather than God's kingdom. So, in light of today's thoughts, let me suggest part of your personal battle plan might be to stake your church and maybe write no church splitters on those stakes. Then watch who leaves the church right after that and praise God the enemies were revealed. Maybe you could pray like this. Lord, please remove any and all people who are here to cause harm or trouble to the body of Christ. Send them out in Jesus' name and by the power of his blood. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next time on Battle Plan. We're going to ask the question, uh, or we're going to talk about another weapon, prayer plus Jesus' blood. 
That's a weapon. We're going to talk about part one. It's going to be a series of several. Part one of prayer plus Jesus' blood. Let me just remind you to keep praying because prayer works. God loves you and I love you. Have a great day.